Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. So recently, my brother and I were up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for a little bit of spring break. If you can count rainy, snow, cold, uh, sleety weather, <laughs> spring break. And it was our first time visiting the city and we only had 72 hours. Now, Pittsburgh is not a huge city, but what makes it a little challenging are all the complicated roadways and the highways and the bridges. And we knew that we wanted to maximize the most of our time. Everyone was giving us suggestions on where to go, things to do, things to eat. But 72 hours is kind of challenging. Now we were staying down in the waterfront district, which is just sort of a uh, retail space. And there's a hotel down there and we're right on the edge of Squirrel Hill. So it was really nice that in the evening when you're tired, you just wanted to find something local to eat and, and maybe have a drink or two and uh, be able to get back to your hotel. And I've really enjoyed making videos from this trip. It was really fun just to do really short videos about some of the different places we went. But I thought I would put one video together, 72 hours in Pittsburgh, some of the coolest things to see, do, and places to eat with such limited amount of time. So if this is your first time visiting Pittsburgh like it was ours, hopefully this little bit of a guide can help you plan your trip and your stay while you are visiting. We're outside the Heinz History Center. We hear this is a pretty cool museum, so we're gonna go inside and see what's there. One of the obvious things to do is visit Permany Brothers here in the Strip District. All right, we're gonna give this a try. Hey guys, here we go. Let's try it out. Messy but delicious. We're outside Heinz Field, home of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Pitt Panthers. That's cool. And right next to Heinz Field, you have the Carnegie Science Center. University of Pittsburgh.
Forbes Field outfield wall. Which is the this is the field, look. Yogi Berra was playing in left field, probably somewhere around where I'm standing, and then he just watched that ball just sail off over the fence. And in 1960, this marks the spot where Bill Mazeroski's home run ball cleared the left center field. And apparently there was a little boy who was just at the game that day, had to leave before the end of the game, just happened to be walking on the outside of the wall, got the ball, and then several days later he was playing ball with his buddies and they lost it Sandlot style into the woods. Uh, there seems to be a true story. I don't think it's made up and uh, just kind of kind of funny that the Bill Mazeroski's ball, instead of being in a hall of fame somewhere is, is lost to nature. And it's hard to say because there's a parking garage here, but somewhere around here was probably where home plate was and where Bill Mazeroski took that uh, legendary ball, sailed it into the it's probably his batting glove. All right, baseball is back, but the Pirates are not home today, so we are planning to take a tour of PNC Park. Uh, in Puerto Rico. So, okay, welcome to PNC Park, the best ballpark in America. What do you think? All right, we're about ready to hop up on the Duquesne Incline. That was a little sketchy, but the view is awesome. All right, we're here at Squirrel Hill trying Minio's, which has been here for a lot of years, and this place comes highly recommended. All right, another messy meal, but we're just gonna go for it. Oh yeah, that sauce is money. All right guys, we're here to ride the Gateway Clipper and it is cold and there's also a Pitt versus Louisville girls lacrosse game over here. So that's what the noise is, but let's go get on this boat and see the sights. All right, it's a bit like the TV show Ozark. We're getting on one of these river boats. Okay guys, welcome back. Hopefully that was helpful for you. I know we had a lot of fun while we were there. Definitely wanna get back maybe during a sporting event. There's so many cool stadiums and cool sporting events there. But if you're just a sports fan in general and you like the history of sports, boy, Pittsburgh has a big sport history. We unfortunately were unable to make the Andy Warhol Museum. That was one that I really wanted to go to, but we had such a little window of time. 
and the Heinz Museum, we actually spent about three hours in there. You could probably spend all day if you explored every single exhibit and read all the different panels. And I do have one more fun video to follow this one in Pittsburgh. Stay tuned for that. If you want to see what comes next, please hit the subscribe button and leave this video a like and leave a comment. Let me know what are some of the places that we missed. I know there are probably a ton. What made it helpful is having a vehicle. I don't know how you would explore this city without a vehicle. We didn't rely on public transportation at all. And I think we were able to maximize our trip by just being able to drive from place to place and parking sometimes not the most legally. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching guys and we will see you on the next video.